Welcome to Clash of the Castle 2024. I think Raw has a problem. I'm not using that title, but that's what I'm thinking because of the last match of the night. We may have a problem in Raw. SmackDown doesn't really have much, so you have nothing really to worry about. Let's do the opening. AJ versus Cody Rhodes. Now, I thought that this would be somewhere in the middle of the card, not the beginning. But it is understandable because it's an I quit match and they want to get it done with enough time so they can schedule everything out. Was it a good match? It wasn't better than most that I've seen and it wasn't worse. It was okay. The fans were what really made the show really pop. Let's make it clear. They do European tours. The fans are much more lively than they are in the United States. It just shows you how bad American fans can be. The American fans for wrestling are not as loud as a European fan. Glasgow, Scotland was loud. Loud, and you could see them. You can hear them. You, you probably even could taste them. That's how loud they were. I think they had a decibel meter at one point, which went up to at least 107 decibels. That's how loud the what? How big was the fans in there? 11,391. Now, if you hadn't heard, which I'm sure you have, anywhere in Europe, you have got to pay a premium to be at one of these events. And from what I remember, they said to do this one, you had to pay $700 a pop, American. Now, I did a little bit of checking. I put it through the calculator. And if I'm right, WWE made nearly 8.5 or 8.9 million for that one event. I could be wrong. It could be less than that, but it's easily over five, nearing seven or eight. It, it was a, a lot of money they made. If they're charging people $700 a shot just to see one of the live events in Europe, it it wasn't cheap. And did they get their worth in this, in this match? Mm, it wasn't bad. It was a good match. Cody got busted open and one part of it, handcuffs, which is a standard in WWE now, were used for both Cody and a AJ Styles. AJ looked good, but by the time it was over, AJ was chained up and stuck onto the ropes. And Cody brings in one of the steel steps to smash him in the head. What do we get? He says, I quit. I'm not surprised. There was no way AJ was going to win it. But then it gives you a major problem because... What do you got left for AJ to do? Don't know. But worse, what is this for Cody? Cody doesn't have much except for the bloodline. And that is exactly what we got when it was over. Cody was heading to the back. AJ was still chained up. We basically had the bloodline come out. Solo comes out. Then you got Tonga Loa, Tama Tonga, the beatdown. Then you got Kevin Owens coming out. Then you have a, why was he dressed I don't understand. Randy didn't wrestle. Why was he dressed up? Why was he in his in in his ring trunks? Why? I don't understand. Now I know most people say, well, they do that sometimes just in case it's an emergency. Somebody's gotta fill in for somebody. Yes, I understand it. But in this situation, I think it would have been better if he had not been dressed in his ring clothes and it was just regular clothes. I think that would have been more effective, but this is what we got. Next match, which 100%, I'm very disappointed. I, I am. And two things, two. One person and booking. I'm disappointed in two forms. The three-way for the Women's Undisputed Tag Championships. We got the tag champs. We have Alba Fire and Isla Dorn. And we got Zayna Baszler and Zoe Stark. Let me say this. Did... Bianca and Jada Cargill look dominant. For certain parts of the match, yes. But let me make this clear to you. Very clear when people say that Jade is just nervous. Bullshit. Jade Cargill is not nervous. Nope. Jade Cargill is still green and Jade Cargill is sloppy. At one point, what happened? She literally fell off the top turn rope as she's trying to jump. She literally... Just slips off and hits her butt on the floor. That's just one thing. Now that happens. It can happen to anyone. 
But as you watch the match and you see how she's working with the other women, she's sloppy. She is. She is just plain sloppy. It doesn't mean she's a bad wrestler, but she's still very green and she's sloppy in the ring. You can tell. Out of everyone there who has been working working how WWE works and how general pro wrestling works, where they either been on the indies or they were very well trained in the performance center when NXT came up. Jay Cargill has not. She's worked in AEW. Not saying she wasn't trained, but you can tell a 7 to a 10 year veteran to nearly a 3 year veteran who never was pushed to really perform at a very high level. She's always had it mostly easy. Mostly. Not all, but mostly easy. But in the end, who do we win? Who, who, who do we get to win? You see me botching because this is sad. This upsets me. You would think Zoe Stark and Shayna Baszler should win. Or the tag champs, even though Jane Cargill is still very green. That's the purpose for her having the title. To work with a, a Bianca Belair so she can improve. No. They decide to give the lowest tier title that is almost not even cared about by the general fans to Aladon. And Alba Fire. Let me give it to you like this. Now, I do understand what they said that uh, Alba Fire has been suffering, possibly lost her loved one, or something has happened the last three weeks. I don't know. I didn't check. But if Alba Fire has lost a loved one, that sucks. That, I, I feel for her. And that's something that's just so unfair. But what's worse. Aladon, Alba Fire have not done anything for one, two, think six months, six, where they literally have not barely been seen or even utilized on Raw, about five or six months. They've been on the main roster for a very long time and they've done nothing and all of a sudden they're given a, t a title for nothing? Now, if it was because of what happened to Alba Fire and possibly losing a loved one, and also there in Glasgow, Scotland, that's understandable. But if they've been on the main roster and have been utilized at least half the time, I would say it's well earned, along with it being in their home country. But literally, they've done nothing with them. They just appeared after the last two weeks, after the first week or whatever. Alba Fire's been through, and now this, it, it feels cheap. I feel sorry for them. I, I legitimately feel sorry for them because they're stuck with dead titles that literally no one really cared that much about. Look, they got a whole bunch of women that could be using to make the division work, and they haven't done it. They focus on three sets of women. That's it. And it's just sad. I feel sorry for them. Next, the match that was something many people wondered what was going to happen, so did I. Chad Gable versus Sami Zayn for the IC Championship for Raw. We wondered, is Otis going to turn against Chad? Is Maxine going to turn? There was no Akira Tozawa. He, he didn't come out. Either he wasn't there or he just didn't come out. It was only Maxine and Chad Gable. Now, interestingly enough, I will tell you this. The fans were very, very, very loud for Otis. And I got to tell you, that makes you wonder, are they really understanding what they got? And will they pull the trigger on Otis? Because at this point, he's been liked for many years. Let's make it clear. During the pandemic, Otis was liked when he was with, well, I, how can I say this with Mandy Rose? Mandy, her sex appeal got him over more than just himself because he was popular. He did get liked. But working with Mandy really pushed him over the edge for people to really like him. That if a woman like her could love a guy like him, it's a dream for anybody. But as after that happened, he just really took off on his own. He didn't need, need her. Even Maxine Dupree, who's a very beautiful woman, he doesn't need a mouthpiece to get over. Otis is over on his own. He may need a Mandy Rose to a certain extent to really get over, but he's over on his own now. And the question is, after seeing the match, seeing that 
Chad Gable really wanted him to, at this point, end of the story, the development of Alpha Academy, everybody just wants Otis to leave. Everybody wants Maxine and, and Terry Tukazawa to leave. And you see it during the match. That Otis is conflicted. He's listening to the fan. Then he's trying to listen to Chad Gable. At one point was being gentle to him. Instead of whacking him in the face. Like he's a kid that deserved to get smacked hard in the face. But at one point when Maxine was handed the championship. Because Chad had planned that as he caused a distraction. And throw Sammy on the ropes and chokes him. He wanted Maxine to hit him in the face. Now, Maxine is wearing a boot on her foot because supposedly she fractured her ankle. And she was supposed to attack, but she couldn't pull the trigger. And he gets mad at her. And that is Chad Gable. Goes dead in her face and Otis tries to stop him. Otis then notices Sammy about to basically do a helo on him and he shoves him out of the way. That's how we got to near the end of the match when... Clearly, you get Maxine as the linchpin for Otis because it was Chad cracking into her and chop blocking her by accident that caused Otis to pick her up and take her away when Chad needed him so badly to win. And Chad lost. And now Sammy said, we're done. I ain't letting you have another shot. Now the question's going to be for this Raw what does this really mean for Alpha? When it comes down to it, as far as I know, Chad Gable's contract is coming up. Is this the end of Chad? Or is this not going to be the end of Chad? I don't know. Ricochet is done. He's not going to be back on TV. I believe in the beginning to the middle of this summer, he's gone. So, is Chad going to join him? To be honest, I'm being, I'm being honest here. As prominent as this story is, Chad Gable at this point, I think it's time. I think it's time for him to leave, honestly. If he is at the end of his contract, at the, either nearing the end of this year or right around now, if he has the option to leave, I say it's time to go. What does he gain? He has been joked on as the second known gold medalist coming in 2012. What has he gained in 12 years? He's been here since 2012, and he's been working WWE for 2012. He's had tag championship, but he's never really been pushed. Vince never cared about him. He called him Shorty G. And a lot of people realize he's much better than he is. He knows how to hold a character. He's great in the ring. He has charisma. He knows how to play a heel. He knows how to play a face. He's gotten over with the fans, but at this point, when he should have won the IC title already, and they put it on... Sammy, just because they wanted to make the fans in Saudi Arabia happy because there's no other reason why. There is none. Chad was that much over than Sammy. And not saying Sammy isn't over too, but it made more better sense storyline-wise to make the fans happy. But they use Sammy. And going into Saudi Arabia got a huge pop. So at this point, I believe it's time to leave. If this is the end of the storyline... I would not be complaining if Chad just disappears and just his contract is done. Otis lays him out because he turns and now Alpha Academy is under Otis's control, not Chad Gable. It's just me. <clears throat> the women's mm, WWE Championship. 100%. This was my favorite match. It was. You got Piper Nivens versus Bailey, And this is a match I truly, truly believe that as much as not everyone would agree with me, Piper might have been the better choice than it was for Bailey. Even though I knew they weren't going to let her have it, I truly believe Piper was ready for it. Because after all these years where we've been seeing Piper work the main roster, yeah, she was called Dewdrop for a while, it was stupid, but she's always put on a good showing. She's always talked very well. She's always done a decent persona. And she can do a character. I believe this would have been the best time to pull the trigger and let her win it. Even if it was only for a few months. 
I truly believe that it would have been a nice change of pace. If they truly believed in the women's revolution, the person that should have just got it is the woman who came up in the new NXT. Not the one that Vince rebooted, but the ones Triple H had done because that's where Piper came up. She was from that generation, at least before Triple H left it. And I truly believe that would have been a better, better idea to actually put to fruition. fruition. The match itself was very good. Piper coming out, she was way over. And Bailey was being booed out of the stands, which is fine. Yeah, she's a face, but we know that she's public enemy number one for the women. And really, if you see the match yourself, you will see that Piper did an amazingly good job. And I truly believe she should have won it. I truly believe she should have. It would have made the best sense for her to win it. And if you're not too fond of her being champion, you could easily get the title back onto Bailey before SummerSlam. Because that's what they're going. They're doing SummerSlam with Bailey and Nia Jax. Because she's queen of the ring. But as it stands, I think Piper should have won it. And then Bailey could have had at least about a month. Going into July, you let Piper have a month's run if you really needed Bailey to do it. And let her just get it back. But this one will give a chance for people to really see if Piper can really do this. And even though they will see a transitional, you will be able to see how she's going to act. How if she gets rid of a Chelsea Green who was dressed in the attire of Glasgow, Scotland, and then wore a mask after that. I don't need to explain it. There's no point in it. She was ejected, and you get the point. But that's just me. I know you're not going to agree, but that's how I feel about it. Final match. This is where we got it. We may have a problem. Damian Priest versus a Drew McIntyre. The Pipers coming out, and the band was great. I enjoyed it. Seeing that Drew got his moment in Glasgow again, great. And then seeing Damien come out, as hated man as he was, was good. But here's where things get very worrisome. Because the match between them was great until Damien tried to do a helo outside the ring. But instead of just jumping over all three ropes, he decided, I'm going to jump on the second turn rope, and then flip over that way. He got his right ankle and leg trapped between the top rope and the middle rope, and it twisted around, and he was hanging literally from his right ankle and leg, and he was literally dangling for a good 45 seconds to a full minute, as not only did Drew started kicking him, but the ref could not get him free. He was not able to be free. He was stuck in there. And as you guys know, ring ropes for wrestling, it is actual steel cable wrapped in tape. So he has two ropes wrapped around his ankle that is metal. It's not plastic. It's not like actual nylon. It's not like how ropes are tra traditionally made. It is steel cable. He may have broken his ankle or he may have fractured it. After he got freed because Drew had to help him out of it, he could not stand on his ankle very well, even though he tried. When he did a razor's edge, halfway through the move itself, he had to literally do the entire razor's edge on one leg. Drew is not a light guy. He's nearly 270 almost, 260, 270. And he literally had to hold him in the air while he's doing the razor's edge. That ain't good. He was in a lot of pain. You could see it. And <clears throat> at this point, it might have actually been wise to let Drew win. I kind of think that Drew winning would have been better because, yes, I don't want to see Damien get taken and stripped of the, the, the title. I don't. I'd rather see him lose it in the, in the ring because if he is legitimately hurt and he's got to get, he, he's got to get rest, they're going to strip him. And I kind of wish he could have lost to Drew here. Particularly that CM Punk is the one that screwed him over because when the original ref get laid out. And they, and he does two claymores to a Damien Priest. One outside the ring, one in the ring. You see a ref come in. We didn't know it was him. He gives two hits. He looks up. Fuck you. 
or basically it's two actually but i'm saying he does for he's doing like fuck you with two fingers like this and basically screws over drew i truly believe if drew had won there going into SummerSlam would be the wisest thing because then you're gonna have drew as a champ cm punk is not a champ and since cm punk is hated but loved as much as he is it wouldn't hurt and particularly that now at this point there's a possibility that Damian Priest may have a fractured ankle because he could not stand on it. I think he might legitimately be really hurt. He was able to walk away, limping away. He was trying to fight through it, but he could be done. He could be literally done. And at this point, like I said, I think Drew should want. Was this good? It wasn't bad, but it wasn't like it was the most dramatic thing there. But the fans really... Hyped it well beyond what it could have been. They went from here to about here, not here. Easily here because of the fans. How ravenous they are. How loud they were. How much fun they were. They were chanting Drew's name. Chanting his music. Chanting Sammy's music. They were in all in on Bailey and Piper Nivenson's match. And also when it came to AJ and, and and Cody, I mean, it was great all around. I'm not going to tell you it's the most greatest match in show of all time. It was good. But it's just me. Peace.